I've now taken both pieces of wire out of the pickle and now we're going to shape each one. What you're doing here, shaping, but you're not going to be getting a perfect round and you're not looking for a perfect round. So I'm starting off shaping it by hand because the wire is quite thin and then I'll finish off if I need to with shaping it with the pliers, but actually I'm all right. So that's my first one and my shape, it's nice, my solder seam is nice and flush. It's exactly what I'm looking for, but my shape isn't round, which is absolutely fine. I'm going to do my second one now, exactly the same method. may with this one need to use my pliers, hopefully not. And this is exactly the same, it's nice and flat and straight. So I'm going to use my pliers and what I'm using are half round pliers. The half round sits away from me and I put that in so it sits like that. I'm just going to twist this wire slightly just so I can get it as straight as possible. So I'm twisting it slightly away from me. And I'm going to go back with my hands again. And there we go. I'll be going with my pliers once more just to twist there. That's even better. So now I need to just solder both solder seams. Then we'll pickle these again. Then we'll move on to the brown gold mandrel and round them both up. I'm going to solder each one separately, so one at a time. Make sure everything hasn't moved while I got my solder block. Okay, I've got my liquid flux and I'm painting the whole of my solder seam, top and bottom. I'm going to completely cover it. Don't want to saturate it too much, but you just want to make sure it's nice and covered. It's moved again, so just going to position that back in place. I'm just going to pick up a couple of um, solder pillions, maybe two. Don't want too much solder there because I don't want too much cleaning up. So I've just put one and I'm going to put another one on top, just on to the side. Oops. wants to stay so they're close together. And this is hard solder that I'm using for this. Again, okay, now I'm going to heat my piece up. Don't want to heat my solder too quickly because it will jump off. So I'll just be gentle. Heat my, and exactly what I didn't want it to do. It's just done. So I'll just pop that back on there. And go again. I'm moving my heat around because I need to heat the whole piece, not just where my solder seam is. So the whole of my bangle needs to be heated up. Now I can concentrate a bit more on my solder seam here. Carrying it around.
So that's my first bangle. And while I solder my second one, I'm just going to move this one onto my steel block to let it cool down before I pickle it. And I'll be doing exactly the same thing I've just done with the round. I'm going to make sure that my solder seams are nice and touching. I'm going to use my flux again and I'm top and bottom. And again, I'm going to grab some hard solder, maybe two pillions again. It's a bit of a funny one as it's square. Gonna do exactly the same things I did before. Heat my piece because I don't want my solder to fly off. And which it's done again. Leave that there when it heats up. I'll pop it on. There. And now I'm going to just put that one on my steel block just to cool down before I pickle it. I've now soldered and pickled both of my bangles. I have a few solder marks, one a bit there, one bit there. So I'm just going to use my file just to tidy those up. I'm using my half round file and I'm going to be using the half round section just to gently touch up and clean up those solder seams. I'm trying not to interfere with any of my texture. Just don't want too much of a mark because when we hammer, we can actually go back over our solder seam with our metal hammer and just add that into the texture. So I'm just taking away just a tiny amount of solder. And so I'm going to do the next one now. And on the square one, I'm flipping it over and I'm going to use the flat side. The next step is to put them both on the rip bangle mandrel and using my rawhide mallet round them up. Just gently pushing them down, grab my rawhide mallet and just as I tap 
I'm turning around and I'm just going to push it down slightly so it's just a bit more taut and tap and turn a bit more tap and turn and push On one side I do need to flip it over and do exactly the same thing on my other side I'm going to get my hammer that I used before and just add a bit more texture over my solder seam just so it all blends in. Next stage for my square one is just to make sure it's nice and flat. So I'm going to get my steel block again and then hammer. I lay it on my steel block I can see that it's not flat so I just need to make sure it's nice and flat and round. Again I'm going to do the same thing flip it over and just work on the other side. So it's nice and flat there. I'm also going to get my hammer again. I can see on my solder seam on the other side. It's just a bit more that I can see. So I'm just going to texture that, hammer it, and texture out. There. Flip it over and do exactly the same thing on the other side. This just spreads the solder if you've put too much. Just bang it again, just to make sure it's nice and flat. And, and when you've got it on the block, this is where you can look to see whether it's a perfect round. And if it's not a perfect round, you can just put it back on your bangle mandrel and, and round it up again using the rawhide hammer. So I'm going to tap a bit more on this just to make sure it's flat and it does look like a quite a nice round for me. So my next step is to do exactly the same thing with my round wire. So I'm going to push down and again just tap and as it gets wider push down and tap. Done one side, I'm going to again flip it over and do the other side. And I'm concentrating on any areas as I'm looking down, I can see a gap because I don't I want this to be a nice even circle. You don't want to hit too hard because you don't want to remove any of your texture. Again, move back to my steel block, hammer around, flip over, do the same thing on the other side. I'm also going to get my steel hammer again and just texture just over my solder seam so it all blends in together. I'm 
I'm going to flip over, see if the other side does, needs it, and do exactly the same thing on the other side. And again, I'm looking at my bangle and I can see there's a little dent there. So I'm just going to go back on my mandrel and just tap that little area out. And there we go, two round bangles. Next we need to do is clean those two up, put them in the polishing barrel if you have one. If not, I'll show you how to do a hand texture on them. Now I have to clean, polish my piece. There are so many different ways that you can polish a piece of jewellery. If you've got a polishing barrel at home, if you have pendant motors, rude, different types of rouges, different types of polish. But today I'm just going to use a really simple method. This is wire wool and you can get wire wool anywhere from your local DIY shop. I'm just going to wrap it around and just pull it through. And this will give a nice matte finish. So I've done one side and I'm going to flip it and do exactly the same thing. On the other side, I'm just literally wiping as if I was using a cloth, just wiping it through. Same thing on this one. Pull it across. I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side, making sure I get the back, front, top and bottom. So that's two bangles with texture. Thank you for joining me on this bangle making course today. If you'd like to find out more about jewellery making, please take a look at the Jewellers Academy website and also share what you've made with us on Facebook and Instagram. I hope to see you again soon. Yeah.